Good morning, friends. Aren't you so thankful that God doesn't require us to go through an inter interview process in order to be accepted into the kingdom of heaven, in order to have a relationship with him while we're on earth, in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm so thankful for that today. I was thinking this morning about all the different interviews that, that I had to go through to get different jobs in my life. And just how when you, when you go to an interview, yeah, you bring your portfolio and it has all your qualifications in there. It has your resume listing everything that you've done, all, all the awards that you've achieved, the degrees you have, the colleges you went to. And basically in an interview, you're trying to sell yourself and you're trying to say why you deserve this job more than anybody else. And I was just thinking about how I'm so thankful that with God, we don't need to go through that process. We don't need to say, God, God, here's all my accomplishments. Here's the awards I've received. Here's my degrees. This is why I should be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Praise God that we don't need to do that because I don't think any of us, none of us would qualify, right? None of us deserve God's grace. None of us, none of us deserve the kingdom of heaven. We're sinners. I'm so thankful today that God cares about the lowly. He cares about the weak. He chooses the common for the uncommon. God chooses the ordinary for the extraordinary. First Corinthians chapter one, starting at verse 26. Brothers and sisters, not many of you were wise when you were called. I know I wasn't. <laughs> not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. I definitely wasn't any of those things. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. So we don't need to try to sell ourselves to God like we would for an interview when we come to God, it's not an, an interview. He already knows us. He knows everything we've done. He He knows that we're not worthy. He knows that we're sinners. He knows that we have messed up time and time again, but we can come as we are. We can give him our heart. We can, we can just lay down before him and fall before him and just say Jesus, and he, he will come to us. We don't need to say any more than that, just Jesus, and he will be there. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Praise God that we can boast in the Lord today. We don't need to boast in our achievements or our accomplishments or our degrees or our job. We boast in the Lord. We, we have favor from God, and I'm so thankful for that. So a while back, I posted on Facebook, this, the author is unknown, but I just, I just love this and I wanted to read it to you. It's not mine. I did not write it. I always try to let you guys know when I'm reading something that I did not write. Uh, so it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn us for our faults. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. John 3.18. See John 3.18. Why would God want me? I'm not perfect. I have all kinds of problems. I have no ability. I have no gifts. I'm just not worthy. Why would God want me? Well, did you know that? Then this is a list of all the people that God used, all the lowly people that God used, all the uncommon and ordinary people that God used to accomplish great things. Did you know that Moses stuttered? David's armor didn't fit. John Mark deserted Paul. Timothy had ulcers. Hosea's wife was a prostitute. Amos's only training was in the school of fig tree pruning. Jacob was a liar. David had an affair. Abraham was too old. David was too young. Peter was afraid of death. Lazarus was dead. John was self-righteous. Naomi was a widow. Paul was a persecutor of the church. Moses was a murderer. Jonah ran from God's will. Miriam was a gossip. Gideon and Thomas both doubted. Jeremiah was depressed and suicidal. Elijah was burned out. John the Baptist was a loudmouth. Martha was a worry wart. Noah got drunk. Did I mention that Moses had a short fuse? So did Peter, Paul. Well, lots of folks did. Author unknown, why would God want me? We all have some deficit, some reason that God should never choose us, but he does. 
God doesn't require an interview for salvation. He is not prejudiced or partial. He loves us in spite of our faults. Why would God want me? Concludes with a conversation bet between Jesus and the devil. Satan says, you're not worthy. Jesus says, so what? I am. Satan looks back and sees our mistakes. God looks back and sees the cross. God wants you and he takes you as you are. God bless you today, friend. Happy Friday.